mainly because of its considerable population of wild cats. But the elephants don't stick to these zones. Many of them have moved into what is called the tourism zone and seem to have got used to the many motorboats here. And growing numbers of them have settled down here and spend all year by the lake. Of course, this improves the chances of the tourists on their short two-hour stay of getting a glimpse of elephants. But what the tourists don't see are the results of the constantly growing elephant population. For example, the way the shores of the lake have silted up and have been eaten bare. The hills all around, which once were green and covered with forests, grow barer from one year to the next. Nowadays, the elephants don't even come here to bathe anymore. The only time they might end up here is when fleeing from the huge fires which race across the parched grasslands every spring. Here, on this desolate soil, not even the fire can find enough to feed it and is brought to a standstill. Fire makes elephants panic. The moment they even scent smoke, they run amok. Occasionally, the fires start by themselves, but normally they're helped by the members of a small mountain tribe called the Manan. The Manan used to live semi-nomadic lives here in the Periyar region, and then they were moved by the government. First of all, they burn small belts of land, and if the wind is favourable, the fire stays small, and at the edge of the wood, it simply dies out. It's these belts which also halt the larger forest fires, if all goes well. But all the same, after every dry season, the area of woodland here has been reduced by a few more hectares. The idea of burning the forest is to fertilise the land with the ash, but the value of this method is disputed, and if there are no April showers, the effect is devastating. This year there were no April showers for the second year running, so the soil is totally exposed to the scorching sun and becomes powdery and useless. It's only in the vicinity of the lake that a few small plants have grown among the ash with the help of the early morning dew. But they're much too sensitive to survive this terrible drought, and there are far too few of them to afford the tormented soil a bit of shade. Things really become critical if the elephants that have fled from the fire return here a few days later, because then they're hungry for anything green. But the young plants are too short and the soil is too loose and dry. So the elephants rip out the plants complete with their roots. If food is really scarce, elephants will even eat dry roots after carefully shaking off as much dust as possible. The poor soil here does the rest. Now there's nothing to hold the thin layer of humus and it's blown away by the wind or washed away by the first of the monsoon rains. The elephants will also eat the ash because this at least gives them a few much needed minerals. But of course a lot of ash and dust makes them really thirsty. is an important part of the elephant's programme of body care. A lot of ticks and maggots which have settled down in the folds of the elephant's hide are then left behind in the mud. The rest are kneaded into a dough like currants. The sun bakes this dough into a hard crust and it's then rubbed off along with the parasites. A dust bath serves the same purpose, but wallowing in the mud is a much more thorough way of cleaning. The Manan people are also pleased to be back home by Lake Periyar 
and not having to rely on the meagre water rations in their settlement on the outskirts of the nearest village. Up to now, they've only been allowed to return to their original reservation for a month every year to keep the grass fires under control. But now they've persuaded the parliament in Kerala to allow them to fish in Lake Periyar all the year round. Of course, the administration of the wildlife sanctuary isn't at all happy about that. But this is probably the only way of ensuring the survival of this small mountain tribe with their own language and long-established traditions. Basically, the Manan are sharing the fate of the elephants. For them, too, there's not enough space left on this earth. If they want to go on living the way their ancestors lived and the way their gods tell them to, their only chance is not among other people, but close to the elephants. Cooking a poor meal of rice. When there's a shortage of fish, Rice is often the only food, because when fish are scarce, wild fruit and vegetables have usually also disappeared, parched. The few fish they do catch are small, about the size of sardines. They're then dried in the sun. But the manan don't eat them themselves. They're far too precious for that. They sell them at the nearest market. They bring in enough money for one day's ration of rice for the entire camp. There are plenty of hungry mouths to feed, and the numbers are growing all the time. That's because the Manan are very fertile, something they regard as a sign of being blessed by the gods. They seem to know that it's only if there are sufficient numbers of them that they can make their voice heard to parliaments and governments. And they have to make their voice heard if they want to go on living the way they do. Here, as throughout southern India, every meal consists of boiled rice and frequently nothing else. But here in the camp, they all get enough to fill their stomachs at least once a day. Actually, the Manan aren't really allowed to live here in the sanctuary with their families. They're only allowed to come here to fish. So they hide away in the forests and the forestry officials turn a blind eye. This is something that the forestry officials mustn't find out, the fact that the Manan strip tree trunks to make baskets. But at least on the present scale, this is something the woods can survive, and the baskets bring in the Manan a few additional rupees at the market to pay for rice or flour. Nobody knows their way around the entire Periyar district better than the Manan. There are people of fishermen and foragers. They've never been hunters. The only thing they're afraid of, apart from the night, are the elephants. And that's why they know all the routes the elephants take. This makes their help invaluable when you're following a particular herd and you've lost sight of them. This is where some man and last spotted the elephants, by the shore of the 